How you doing guys? Welcome back to another video. My name is Harry and I'm a final year medical student at the University of Limerick. Firstly, I want to say congratulations to all of you that received your offers for graduate medicine through the CAO yesterday, which was the 8th of August. That's so exciting. I'm sure you guys can't wait to start, especially to those of you coming to UL. I hope to see you guys very soon. Unfortunately, however, this video does intend to highlight some of the issues that are now arising in the graduate medicine space since I started back in 2021. Money is taking over in medicine. In April of this year, the Medical Independent published an article stating that generational wealth is now required to pursue graduate medicine due to high fees and a lack of a loan scheme. Now for context, I believe it was my year, which was the 2021 intake of grad med, that were the last to be able to avail of the Bank of Ireland graduate medicine loan. The bank is honouring that loan for those students through completion of the course, and it would have roughly covered most of the tuition fee. So without this loan or government support, we are now excluding entire demographics of the population from accessing medical education, irrespective of their capabilities. This has a knock-on effect of massively reducing competition that has historically been very high, and the GAMSAT scores have actually reflected this. So what does this mean for graduate medicine? Well. Let's take a look. Okay, I've put together the scores as per the CAO round zero for the four grad med schools in the Republic of Ireland since 2018. The asterisks, for those of you that are not aware, mean that not everyone on that score received an offer. So I think actually it goes to a random number generator to decide in those cases, which is a bit scary, but I'm pretty sure that's how they do it. And the green area denotes the year of my entry, and the last year students could avail of the loan. Now, again, just for context, the discrepancies between the scores, as in the, the typical normal values for each school, that can vary based on the location of the school. So RCSI and UCD being in Dublin, for example, might be favorable to more, and um, the kind of curriculum they have um, and the number of places they have available. So for example, I think the year of my entry, you know, UL had 150 and I think RCSI only had 80 places available, something along those lines. And of course, some of those places are for EU and some for non-EU students. Anyway, looking at the table, what you can see is that we had a general upward trend of scores up to 2021. And this isn't just to 2018, you can go back further and look at the records for scores prior to 2018, but generally speaking, there is an upward trend of these scores up to 2021. And that's probably as you'd expect. With grad med, and I suppose taking the GAMSAT, especially in Ireland, unlike undergrad, people are sitting it many, many times. You know, if you're trying to get undergrad medicine, you might sit it two, three times um, and then call it a day and just maybe try to go for grad med. Whereas with grad med, some of these people can sit it three, four times uh, and do a number of cycles of application to get in. And so that's why typically you expect the competition to go up year on year and you would expect those points to continue to get competitive and remain competitive. However, with the graph here, as you can see, in the case of three of the four schools since 2021, since the loan was taken away, you've had a drop of six points for GAMSAT score. Now, anyone that sat the GAMSAT will know that a six point drop is massive. It's very, very significant. And so you can see where we're at now, just yesterday when the scores came out, we've had 2024, which is the first year since 2018, when actually all the scores were in the 50s. We haven't had that in a while. But the point is you can see the dramatic effect that a lack of a loan scheme is having, a lack of government support is having on the scores and on competition, given that the GAMSAT is really along with a 2-1 degree, the only measure of students applying for graduate medicine in Ireland. So, you know, I think the numbers are clear to see. Let's have a quick look at the fees. So I wanted to highlight this because again, it's making the point clear that people are being priced out of medicine um, and it's drastically affected competition as we've seen in the GAMSAT scores. And this is really what's contributing. So we're comparing here the year that I entered, which is 21, 22, and the year we're now going into 24, 25. And you can see that all of the fees are trending upward. Now you would maybe expect a small amount of increase um, maybe relative to inflation year on year. So um, I'm not saying that the fees should necessarily stay exactly the same, but the point is you can see how large they are from the outset. And UCD, I believe were in the paper, I think it might've been last year, the year before, for the price hiking that they have been involved with in the last couple of years. And you can actually see that in the three year growth here. They're up 11.4% since the year I went in. 
um, which is phenomenal. So that just shows you not only is it expensive, but it's getting more and more expensive. And you can also see just the baseline costs for some of these schools are really, really high. I mean, we're talking about UCD being 18,000 now, above 18,000, and, and RCSI being above 17,000. These are phenomenal fees. They're really, really high, and they are pricing people out of medicine. And without a loan scheme, which I believe was up to a max of 15,000 per year in the first place. So bear that in mind that the Bank of Ireland loan that was available still wouldn't maybe have covered this entire fee. You would still have had an excess beyond that. Um, certainly in, in today's fees. So, you know, it does highlight the, the problem here. Without a loan, how are you expected to put that money forward year on year? And just a point on these fees, even when you do get in, is that the fee that on the year you get in is not the fee that it stays either, right? So the new fees that get published every year are what you have to pay. So these increases also affect us. So in my first year, this is what I was paying, which was 15,500, and now we're nearly up to 16,000 as I leave. And actually UL have published what their fees are going to be in 25, 26, and it's now I think 16,160 or something like that. So they've now gone beyond the 16,000 threshold. So it's clear to see that again, people are being priced out these prices without a loan, without government support, you can see what's happening with the GAMSAT scores and you can see what, what's going to happen and continue to happen unless we are able to do something about it. There you have it. GAMSAT scores are falling in line with ever increasing fees and no loan or government support. So what can we do? The first thing is that we all realize that it's a problem and we acknowledge the problem. I hope this video gets us talking and keeps us talking. We need to publish our views, make it known to government and the schools that facilitate this, that these issues aren't going unnoticed. Otherwise, we risk losing fair competition, equitable access, diversity in medicine. I really wanna hear your views on this, guys. I wanna know if people know of other advocation groups or of supports that people maybe can avail of. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about this, if anyone is really struggling with this issue and what you think we can do to try and change this as soon as possible. Thank you so much for watching, supporting the channel, guys. I have a lot of videos in the pipeline. I know I always say that it's been a year, but I actually have one other video other than this that's already edited and ready to go up at some point in September. That was a project I did last year in third year. Um, and then I have a week in life that I filmed in third year in first semester. I think I was on a surgery rotation and I'm currently editing that as well. So I hopefully I'm going to schedule these videos before I actually start my semester, which is on the 19th of August. Um, and I'm starting down in Port Chunkla Hospital in Balneslow. So I'm hoping to get some of those videos scheduled to go up in the next few months so that even if I'm overwhelmed and inundated during the semester that you still have videos coming up. Um, let me know what you think of this video guys and as I say, let's keep talking about this because it is a real issue that needs addressing. Thank you so much. Catch you in the next one.